It's Nick here for Into Boxing and I'm delighted to be joined by Sky Sports' Adam Smith. First of all, Adam, how are you? I'm very good, Nick, very good. It's been an exciting week with Ben Whittaker's announcement and uh, obviously very much looking forward to the tournament uh, tomorrow night. The Cruiserweights should give us uh, plenty of, uh, of thunder, plenty of uh, a knockout action, I think. Um, so the cruiserweights are great because they've got the, the speed, but they've got power as well, small heavyweights. It should be a lot of fun. Super lightweights were great. Lightweights were off the charts in Coventry, and I, I expect Manchester to uh, to come out and support a great night tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic night tomorrow night. What does this do for, not just the winner, because obviously that will propel their profile, but for everybody on the card getting showcased on Sky Sports? Do you know that's a really good point? Everyone talks about the 40k, the winner, Corey Gibbs, uh, Dylan Chima, who we're going to be have, have fighting on Sky under under the, uh, the the new deal he'll do with boxers. So ultimately, for the winner, it's a fantastic um, achievement to get through a night like that. But there's seven that don't make it, and I've got to say the seven in Coventry, particularly Liverpool, was great, but the seven in Coventry were unbelievable. And I think that each one of them can go home with a, a great experience. And I'd like to see all of them come through again. I think you know the the whole experience of being on a platform, being interviewed, um, the lights, the cameras, the camaraderie of a tournament like this as well, but then having to sort of switch off and, and, and you know, do something which is very different, very unique, you know, potentially three fights in, in one night. Um, I just hope that every one of them enjoys it. I, I think, as I said, the, the lightweights in Coventry were, uh, were fantastic from start to finish. Four can't make it into the semi-finals, that's the way it works, but I think um, I know that the talent here and the ambition and the hunger and the way they've trained, um, they're not going to let us down and I think they'll all, uh, they'll all gain from the experience of the show. We're in for a fantastic night tomorrow night in Manchester. Going back to earlier this week, you mentioned their side, the signing of Ben Whittaker. How much of a coup was that for Sky Sports and Boxing to land Ben? Because there was obviously, by the sounds of it, a lot of offers on the table for Ben. What do you think tipped over the edge for him to go Boxer and Sky Sports? Nick, it was massive, there? absolutely massive. Um, we've, we've been on a journey, Ben Shalom and I, for, for nearly a year. And uh, when I went up to Sheffield before the Olympics, um, you know, I had my eyes on the... Uh, the, well, pretty much the ones we've landed. Um, Galal Yafai went to, to Matram, he followed his brothers, and I think Eddie's the right promoter for him because he's got a you know, great deal around that weight class, and um, Galal's going to be a world champion, I have no doubts. But, and the McCormacks are great, and Siobhan Clark, there's, there's lots of other really good fighters, but I have my eyes really on, on the five that we've got. You know, Fraser Clark is universally loved in, uh, in boxing, he's a great character, he's almost like the leader of the pack captain of Team GB and obviously he's a huge heavyweight too. Uh, Caroline I think is going to be an absolute superstar. I think she's going to cross over. I think she's going to transcend the sport. I'm that excited about Caroline Dubois. Um, I really pestered Ben on Lauren and Karis. Um, that was a hard battle. Um, Lauren is just one of the greatest amateurs we've ever seen and I think she'll be a fantastic pro. What a great story with being, uh, you know, having had 50 caps for Wales and, and Karis is an absolute, I mean she's just charisma on a stick and she's got real power too so and the two of them come as a power couple and I think that's just uh, uh, it's fantastic for the sport um, Ben Whitaker said you know you saved the best to last the icing on the cake and you know maybe we have in a way I think he's the one that's got the potential to become a box office star he's uh, you know he looks the part he talks the talk he's got great skills um, and people are gonna love him and hate him and I think that showmanship and, sort of marmite that he's got. Um, I said in interviews the other day, he's got a, a sort of sprinkling of David Hay, a little bit of Nassim, a bit of Floyd Mayweather, and you know, maybe James DeGale too. I, I don't know, this, he's fascinating Ben, and he's 24, and he's got a fantastic trainer in Sugar Hill, he's got a great management company in 258, and he's got the best platform, so, uh, and I'm forgetting Ben as the best young promoter as well, entrepreneurial. You know, he's got a fantastic team. Just see them in the background there. They're always coming up with ideas. They're young, they're hungry, they're uh, innovative. And I think that's what's attracting these uh, these young Olympians and the likes of your Adam Azeems to, to Ben. You know, he's young as well and they can relate to him and, and they want to be on Sky. So uh, it's fantastic. And yeah, Ben Whitaker is a special fighter, I think. Um, you never know. Um, I was around Ryan Rhodes today and around Dave Colwell and many others and Johnny and you know, journeys going different ways. Um, I, I was absolutely convinced Ryan Rhodes would be a, a world champion at, 
at the right weight class. He went up to middleweight to fight Edis Grant. It didn't quite work out for him. So you never know. But I think Ben will be a world champion. I think Caroline will definitely be a world champion. Lauren and Karis and, and Fraser, they've all got you know, all opportunities. I mean, Lauren could be a two freeweight world champion. They, um, and it's not just that. They're going to be um, fantastic characters on the journey. And I think that's what Ben has got with Boxer. And that's what I've encouraged him to do, to get a real diverse mix, a real you know, different stories. That's what the tournament's about. You, know, you have grassroots, you have the likes of your Pigfords and your Brad Rays, who maybe haven't had the opportunities. And, then you, you, you put in there with the, you know, the stars of the Olympics and it was the greatest you know, Olympics ever from a British point of view under Robert McCracken and his team. And they've got a bit of a head start because they fought at elite level. They've um, you know, had the best nutrition, the best training facilities in Sheffield. And they're very rounded individuals and they're great to be around and they speak well and they fight. So I'm really excited about all of them. But uh, yeah, Ben was particularly special. It was a, a real battle to get Ben. Um, who wouldn't want to be with Ben Whitaker, who wouldn't want to be interested um, in the sort of Marmite character that Ben is. Um, he's going to polarise opinion, he's going to divide everybody, but I tell you what, you're going to want to watch him and I think it's going to be a fascinating journey. As careers start, careers come to an end, Amir Khan today announced retirement, Kel Brook last week announced his retirement from the sport. For both of them, right decision in your opinion for them to both bow out the sport? I had a voice note half an hour ago from Amir. Um, we're very close, very close to Kel as well. Um, when I sat with them after the fight, which I think was a great ending to you know their bitter rivalry, it was fantastic to see them in the ring afterwards. It was wonderful to hear what they said to each other at the post-fight press conference, which is one of the most endearing I ever remember. Um, they put it to bed. I hoped that day, that night, that both would retire. I think Kel was tempted. You know, he, he boxed really well, and I think maybe he wanted another. I think when the the sort of talk of the Christian Bank fight, which I was never particularly comfortable in weight-wise. And I just think, you know, Kel's come to a decision. He's got peace. I, I think that was burning inside him, you know, that it was almost more important, more personal to Kel than it was Amir. And I think that Kel has made the right decision to sort of walk away on top. As far as Amir, as I said to him straight afterwards, and again in, in the week after, you've got nothing to prove to anyone. You've given us a, a hell of a ride. It's been fantastic. You've made a lot of money, and it's been really exciting. And um, you know what? What better place to go out? Um, both, I thought, were going to carry on. And look, I just, I'm really pleased that both have decided to call it a day. Um, we'll remember them both so fondly. Um, Amir's had such a thrilling career. You know the ups and downs. The what I love about both Amir and Cal, and actually it took, what, nearly 20 years to make their fight, they've never ducked a challenge. They've always gone into huge fights. I, th I know that Amir wanted to fight you know, Mayweather and Pacquiao, but they, they've, they've, they've done the best they can. And they've, you know, they've gone into the lion's den. You know, look at Cal, he's gone up and fought Golovkin. He came back down and boiled down to, to fight Errol Spence, who's now a pound-for-pound -pound star. And, you know, that, that win over Sean Porter. And I always go back to the Kevin McIntyre fight when he ripped the British title away from Kevin and you know in Glasgow again in hostile territory and Amir I mean how many great nights and not all the ones he's won you know Bradis Prescott was the biggest shock the biggest upset and 11 months later he was uh, beating Katelnik for a world title you know reviving under Freddie Roach they're both fighters that's what Cal and Amir are like they're both fighters they're both nice guys um, and they're both they've both become you know good Look, you can never, it's, it's tough to get close to fighters. I got very close to Nassim Hamad and, you know, and Ricky, and it's tough, but you do, you naturally do get close to them, and you've got to keep independent and, and totally, you know, totally unbiased and totally straight when we pick up Mike's, Matt, and I. You know, we don't care who's going to win. It's a business. You know, the best man or the best woman will win. But you do get close to them, and I got particularly close, I think, to both Cal and Amir. Um, Cal I first saw when he was nine, ten years old in, in Winkerbank Amir when he was about 15 and you know you've, you've sort of grown up with them and um, I'll miss them in the ring but I'm glad they're calling it a day, I think it's the right time for the pair of them. Um, I wish them well but they know that because they'll see me probably in a, a few weeks time and it's been nice to get our families all together and uh, you know, reminisce. One question obviously that you've probably been asked a fair few times, is re talks about the rematch between Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk. Is there anything been decided on what network Anthony Joshua is going to fight with? Will it be on Sky Sports? I've, I've always answered this in the same way. I'm very confident that Anthony Joshua will remain with Sky. Uh, we've had him since the beginning of his professional journey um, with Matchroom and 258. It's been a wonderful relationship. Uh, we've been great for, for, for AJ. 
Um, the Sky Sports brand has been fantastic. He's loved being with us. Um, so it's a, it's a mutual, you know, affectionate relationship. And um, you know, I know AJ well. I know his team well. Uh, I'm very confident that he will uh, re-sign with Sky. Uh, negotiations continue. It's difficult. It's uh, it's a business. Um, so uh, we're not over the line yet. Um, but I am. Uh, yeah, I'm very positive that, that Anthony will uh, will continue fighting on Sky, and uh, I think he'll he'll fight on Sky till the end of his career. Um, but nothing's in stone, nothing's uh, signed, and those negotiations continue behind the scenes. Obviously, they'll have to come to a conclusion pretty soon because we know the back end of July is meant to be the rematch with with Alexander Usyk. Uh, but I'm very confident that we'll be involved and. Uh, Knowing AJ, he's a very loyal guy, and I think that he loves us and we love him. So, uh, you know, it's um, we've we've shared a, a big journey so far. I'll be very disappointed if that's not the case going forward. Super. Well, Adam Smith, thank you very much for giving into boxing some of your time, and we'll hopefully catch up in the future. Yeah, speak soon. Thank you.